Rama's rite of passage through the final stages of the fourth dimension, 2013 and 2014. Dearest friends, many of you are aware that for almost two years I've experienced what Archangel Michael has named our rite of passage as we clear the way so that we may enter the magical realms of the fifth dimension. I was married to my husband, Kent, for almost 45 years, and we had many wonderful years together. However, sometimes we or our loved ones chose a different path that we or they could not follow, and so we have to make some very difficult decisions. I will always treasure the love and the fond memories that we shared, and Kent will always have a special place in my heart and in my prayers. However, these past ten years have been a great test for me, especially the last two years. I have learned so much about staying centered within my heart, while rising above the almost constant negative situations with compassion and forgiveness. Beloved Michael said to me during the last difficult process, Remember, beloved, the path of light is also the path of freedom. In February 1992, Archangel Michael overlighted me for the first time with his incredibly powerful, loving, and wise energy, and then promptly began to prepare me to become his messenger. It has been a roller coaster ride within an expansive, constant, upward spiral ever since. In December of 1992, I experienced my first major rite of passage, which lasted for almost two years. Later on, Lord Michael told me, Remember, beloved, the greater the gifts, the greater the test. And this has proven to be so. However, in retrospect, I can see the justice in all that has taken place in my life since I was strongly nudged under the path of enlightenment. I can honestly say the rewards have far outweighed the trials and tests. In 1982, my husband Kent retired from his position as regional marketing director for Western Delta Airlines after a successful 40-year career. I also retired from my position as a manager broker of a very successful San Diego real estate company. We decided to invest some of our retirement savings in a tax shelter with a company that was investing in purchasing the rights to popular book titles, which would be marketed as audio tape books. These audio tape books would later become CDs and now are popular e-books. There were many popular tax shelters in the 1980s, and small investors were beginning to take advantage of them, along with the big investors. Congress decided to change the rules and retroactively voided deductions for many of the tax shelters, ours included. It was called the TEFRA Act, some kind of tax reform act which adversely affected millions of small investors. We had to pay back the tax reductions we had received along with compounded interest from 1982 to 1992. Interest rates were from 12 to 14 percent during those years, along with severe penalties. When we received three different tax notices in December of 1992 for many thousands of dollars, Kent had a stroke the next day. It did not affect him physically, however, he never totally recovered mentally. We lost all of our savings but $10,000, and we almost lost our home. However, there were some amazing miracles that take place during that time, and I know, as now, my guardian angel were by my side to give me courage and to see that all was not lost. From that time on, Kent became quite depressed and withdrawn and would only interact with our immediate family. He also began to drink quite heavily. He would no longer interact with his many friends, and he never played golf again. He belonged to an airline's golf group, and he had played twice a week for many years, which he very much enjoyed. As a result of financial loss, I had to go back to work to augment our now insufficient monthly income. It seemed as though Kent began to spiral down into depression and defeat, while I gained the determination and strength to begin my journey onward, outward and upward. If the fateful financial reversal had not happened, I would never have had the courage or the tenacity to stretch my mental abilities and overcome my feelings of inadequacy to become a published author and a world-famous spiritual teacher-counselor. In the past, I had studied astrology, and I had gained quite an extensive knowledge of the art. I began to offer spiritual astrological readings and eventually soul readings from Archangel Michael, either by phone or in person. It was not very long before I began to book readings from people all over the world, as many as many personal sessions. I was amazed at how quickly the word got around and how fast my appointment calendar was filled. Can you see how our divine plan will unfold if we are prepared to move through the adversity with which we are confronted? We must then have the courage to step out of our comfort zone and embrace the gifts we are offered. I was very nervous and fearful at first. However, with beloved Michael's loving patience and gentle coaching, I gradually began to trust the process as I gained the assurance that I was receiving was accurate. It was a wonderful gift to me and also to everyone I was guided to counsel. As beloved Michael tells us, there is always a gift or a blessing on the other side of a test or a challenging situation. Many of you know the rest of the story, for you have read Archangel Michael's messages and followed his teachings for many years now. 
Since 1992, every year I was given another challenge along with greater opportunities to spread Archangel Michael's incredible wisdom teachings. My knowledge, abilities, and awareness have grown exponentially as I boldly took up the banner I was offered and endeavored to fulfill my divine mission to the best of my abilities. Over these last few years, Kent's dementia became more pronounced, frustrating for him and more uncomfortable and frightening for me and my children, as well as my assistant Cindy. After Kent became quite ill with the flu and severe di dehydration, his son Dan took him to the hospital emergency room. Kent fought and protested all the way. Dan and I agreed that it was time to seek guardianship, and we also realized that I can no longer care for him in our home. Kent was sent to a rehabilitation center after a 12-day hospital stay. During that time, we began the guardianship process. For my family and I knew it was time to make our other arrangements for his care, for his sake and for mine. What took place next was not my choice, for I was committed to see that Kent was well cared for as long as he lived. However, under pressure, Kent allowed one of his sons to convince him that a divorce was the best course of action. It was a drastic decision. I would have never considered. However, I can now see that no matter how painful, it turned out to be the best course of action for me and hopefully for Kent. Fortunately, with the help from Dan and Letitia, I was able to pay Kent for his equity in our home. I also had some choice to make when the divorce was final. My former husband, the father of my three children, had passed away, and so I chose to take back their family name, Vizane. I have four grandchildren and five incredible great-grandbabies. We are a very close and loving family, and we spend as much time together as possible. I have chosen to use Rana, my first name only, as my professional name. However, my legal name is now Rana Vizane. I have learned so much during the process, and I have released everything in my life to the Father and Mother God, and in service to my spiritual mission. I feel so much joy, and I am at peace within my heart, for I know that this has all been part of my personal ritual of passage. As I have endeavored to integrate, balance, and harmonize all of the frequency patterns I have created within my third and fourth dimensional world, I hear from so many people these days who have been tested to the maximum in many areas of their life. The tests we are experiencing are about maintaining our integrity as we strive to live our highest truth. It is vitally important that we claim our spiritual power while endeavoring to stay centered within the Sacred Heart. We are also learning to view life around us from a higher vantage point. Gaining compassion and spiritual detachment is now our greatest challenge. This is not an easy task for many of us for we have always been followers, caregivers, and willingly assumed a support position most of this lifetime, and I am sure in many past lifetimes as well. Archangel Michael has also told us, we are to become an actively assertive with a loving overlay. It is apparent that we are being prepared for the next big step in a higher frequency state of being. Therefore, we must release all the fear and the deep residual negative energy from within, so that we may function appropriately within our newly refined environment. I am amazed at how much my reality has shifted over the past year. Sometimes I feel I can hardly understand myself anymore as my consciousness shifts into a higher plane, and I begin to view many things in my life from a different vantage point. My compassion is greater, however. I find I do not engage nearly as much in the small everyday dramas going on with my family and those around me. I hardly ever turn on the television anymore. I subscribe to the weekly Time magazine, and that gives me a brief update of the happenings going on as the world turns. That way, I do not get caught up in all the news drama that humanity is bombarded with on a daily basis. I am so very blessed, and I feel such serenity and joy each and every day. My creative juices are flowing strongly once again, and the amazing process of integrating all of our fourth-dimensional soul fragments has been an experience beyond belief. I am so excited to share all of the amazing advanced information I have been given. We truly are moving into our brave new world. I wish to thank all of you for your loving support and prayers throughout these difficult times. This has been and is a time of miracles. I know the best is yet to come. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, our beloved Archangel Michael and Lady Faith, and all our beloved light companions. Eternal love and angel blessings, Rana.